Alessia, uh, is the speech looks like it's coming to an end. Uh, Keir Starmer, has he um, wowed his audience today? Was he were they receptive to his message of change uh, and uh, the new vision of the Labour Party? Well, yes, Jake. So today marks the four-year anniversary from the 2019 general election, and that is when Boris Johnson obliterated Jeremy Corbyn with a massive majority and Labour's biggest loss since 1935. The whole point of this speech was to really convince the electorate that Keir Starmer was shedding that image, that Jeremy Corbyn predecessor that he often has said to have lingered in the party and something that he has been really keen to get rid of. The bulk of the speech was about growth, it was about being the party for public services and a government that will actually serve the nation rather than what he says is Tory chaos and psychodrama. Everyone in the room seemed pretty enthused by it and it was definitely an appeal to the working class electorate rather than the right wing and those that he's been previously trying to access um, by referencing Margaret Thatcher for example, so it was definitely a bit of a change there. And do you think this was sort of squarely aimed at the Red Wall voters who, in that record election defeat four years ago today, uh, the Red Wall voters who were seen to have abandoned the Labour Party? This is an appeal to come back to Labour, we've changed and uh, we want you back. Definitely. I mean, we're in Milton Keynes right now, which is made up of two parliamentary constituencies. Both are held by the Conservatives and have been since 2010. So this was definitely a bid to appeal to those voters who feel like the party, the Labour Party, completely lost touch with the electorate in 2019. The trouble is, though, is he was critical of Jeremy Corbyn, but we must remember that he actually did support Jeremy Corbyn's leadership bid in 2019. So it has left a lot of people asking, who is the real Keir Starmer? And how do we know that in four years' time we won't see a whole new version of, of this leader? And, of course, that sort of... It, it, I don't think it harms him to have this sort of I am the ruthless change candidate who can... Uh, you know, who's prepared to drive the change from my party and turn my back on even his own personal legacy as being one of Jeremy Corbyn's cheerleaders. Definitely. What was really interesting in this speech, and is something that he hasn't touched on very much before, is he said it wasn't just Jeremy Corbyn's era that he wants to renade on. It was actually from a while before that, which led some journalists to ask whether he was being critical of Ed Miliband, who was obviously the, a former Labour Party leader and is now a member of the Shadow Cabinet. He rejected that idea, but it does open up some firing lines for what exactly Keir Starmer meant by that. He referenced a lot that he came from a working class background, something which he, he often does in these speeches. He said that his dad was a toolmaker, his mum was a nurse. Um, and that was definitely an appeal to show that Labour are still towards the left on the political spectrum and not just appealing towards the right. And Alicia, uh, a, a political calculation made by Keir Starmer today, let's get out of London, let's move away from Westminster, which is obsessing about talking about immigration. Uh, let's go and you know, address the country, let's talk about the issues that matter to people. How's that calculation worked? Do you think he's shifted the dial enough to move people off this big issue of immigration that's obviously dominating Westminster headlines Well, you say, that, you, you say that, Jake, but he actually focused on immigration quite a lot during the speech, and that wasn't just from questions asked by journalists afterwards. He actually brought it up himself pretty regularly. He was very critical of the Rwanda policy. He said it absolutely will not work and that the Tories have just thrown money down the drain. However, he didn't really mention exactly what his plan going forward would be. He didn't reject the idea of a different returns agreement with another country, another safe third country, for example. And he, all he said was that he really wants to stop the cause at the root, and that is um, combat, combating the criminal gangs. He didn't really give much detail on how he's going to do that, which I think is what is going to be the key point for Labour going forward. Alicia, thank you so much for joining us.